Hey guys, how's it going? Ches back again with some more Sunderland career mode and it's time to take on Stoke. We're going back to league action after uh, pretty poor uh, performances actually in the Champions League in the last episode. So uh, it's time to get back to some league form. Obviously we do only have the one defeat so far but we are sat fourth at present. Four points off the top. Arsenal sit top of the league which is uh, definitely interesting. Different, something you wouldn't expect. But uh, we get off to a great start here. Nelson Oliveira with a great shot from distance. Keeper's probably going to be a little bit disappointed with himself. Did get a good, solid hand to that, as you'll be able to see from the replay. Good turn inside with that step over, and then a decent shot. And Keeps really should have done better with that. But we will take it. We will take a 1-0 lead early on in the game. And then uh, Stoke kind of came out as a little bit of a decent chance here, but Mignolet gets down to make a good save. And, of course, after the last episode, he is really going to be under a lot of scrutiny in this one. So uh, he's going to have his work out to try and keep my opinion of him up. And uh, yeah, it goes close there. Unfortunately, with the first effort that was blocked, and then that shot just flies past the far post. A little bit further away than it first appeared, but uh, a decent effort nonetheless. And uh, we go in at half-time, 1-0 up. So a decent start, and uh, trying to uh, improve on our league position. Obviously, we uh, we won the league last year. We really don't want to be sat fourth. Uh, to qualify for the Champions League this year would be great again, but the, the, uh, the board want to win the league again. They want us to retain the trophy, and uh, we're going... Well, so far to a point, but we really need to step up in our league performances and make sure we keep turning those draws into wins. And uh, that tidy finish from Gary Medell rifled into that bottom corner. Really precise, accurate finish. I was really impressed with, with that, actually, because he doesn't score that many goals, which is a part of his game that he uh, really needs to improve on. And Yates here has a great chance to put us 3-0 up. And uh, I think that sort of situation is where we miss Honda, that extra, uh, you know, guaranteed goal. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's putting that one well wide, and it was uh, disappointing. It really was disappointing because he really should have finished that. And I think Kazuki Honda would have put that into the back of the net, which is, uh, you know, something that we really have been uh, lacking in the team at the minute. You know, we're struggling to create chances. Obviously, in this game, we're doing well. We're two 0 up, but uh, ordinarily, we have been struggling to create chances, especially against Severe as well. Our lack of creativity up top and lack of invention from uh, the wide players and stuff really uh, kind of drove home the fact that we, we are missing Kazuki more than uh, more than I hoped we would. Uh, obviously, £35 million was a lot of money to get for him, but he was a huge player to try and replace. Hopefully, Yeic and Lamella will be able to uh, you know bed in properly over the next few weeks, and fingers crossed we'll be able to find some form, but uh, I'm going to have to pull my finger out, I think, and uh, really concentrate and try and get some, uh, some decent performances out of everyone in the team, rather than just relying on Nelson Oliveira and... Uh, Previously it was Honda, but overly reliant on Nelson Oliveira at the minute for goals. But Oliveira didn't start this one. We are going with Lamella and Adrian at home against FC Basel. Obviously the away game was insane. That 5-4 game that uh, we did eventually come out on top with. Incidentally, a game that Yeyic actually won for us with that free kick. So he's not doing too badly. You know, he's still doing well. But one player that is doing badly is Simon Mignolet. And I have no words for what just happened. There are, uh, there are a couple of replays in here that I left in. And this is almost, almost the final nail in the coffin for me with Mignolet. That is just horrific, a horrific mistake. And uh, he's been costing us all season long. Yes, he's made a couple of decent penalty saves, but uh, he's just making mistake after mistake at the minute, and it's really, really starting to wick me off. Now, obviously, January's not too far away, and uh, whether we'd be able to sell him for a decent price and bring someone else in in just the month of January, I'm not sure. But uh, are there any goalkeepers out there you think we could look at to try and replace him with? Because obviously he's rated 85 overall now, so we could get a hefty price for him. Uh, I will, maybe for the worst, the, the worst, maybe for the first week, not transfer list him to see if we can get a big enough offer um, from just an outright bid. Because obviously when you transfer list someone, they start to offer a little bit less. But uh, maybe if I transfer list him and then put in a counter offer, we might be able to get a decent price. But uh, obviously we're going to need to be sharpish with a replacement because you don't really want to be too heavily reliant on Kieran Westwood. He is a decent player, but uh, not good enough to hold down a first team role. And uh, yeah, it's there again. We missed Honda. That was uh, the last kick of the game to try and get a point from this home game against FC Basel, and we do get a one nil loss in the end. And you'll see on screen as well at the top, Sevilla do win three two away in Amsterdam at the Ajax. Is it the Ajax Arena? No, it's the Amsterdam Arena, isn't it? Away in Amsterdam at the Amsterdam Arena. I did uh, check the table just to see how we were getting on, because obviously we had some up and down results. Two defeats in a row now against Sevilla and FC Basel, and uh, Bayern top of their group there, and Barcelona as well doing well. And uh, Sevilla, four wins out of four so far, and uh, we're sat third 
on uh, goal difference behind Ajax. So we're going to have to make sure that we win both games that we have left in the group, or at least make sure that we beat Ajax by a decent margin, because uh, that's going to be vital. We'd, I'd rather finish second and go through to the knockout stages and lose there than finish third and go into the Europa League, because it's just not a competition I want to be a part of. If we're going to be in Europe, I want to be able to be in the Champions League. If we're not going to be in the Champions League, I want to be able to concentrate on the league form. But uh, the league form was has been decent-ish. Like I say, we got the result against Stoke, and we come into this one at home against top of the table Arsenal who were, were a decent side actually they caused us a lot of problems in this first half especially Giroud there with a powerful effort that just eventually guides or glides past that far right hand post and we're a bit of a let off and then Wilshire here cutting down the right hand side cheeky back heel into Arshavin who gets a good shot off but uh, Kieran Westwood who we uh, we are starting in goal for this one uh, makes a good save I was so annoyed at Simon Mignolet I started my reserve goalkeeper against top of the league that's uh, how disappointed I am in him at the minute. But uh, Adam Johnson there with our only effort of the first half, incidentally, and uh, flew flew over the net. Really disappointing effort. And then Diaby here with another effort that uh, Kieran Westwood, again, is quite comfortably able to bat away. So we go in at half-time at 0-0. And uh, you'll be able to see from the half-time half -time statistics how on top Arsenal have been. 56% possession and 11 attempts on goal. Now, uh, the way I play football, it's uh, you're well aware I do like a possession-based game. And for me to only have 44% possession in a single half is genuinely unheard of so far in this career mode. That just shows you how poor I am at the minute playing with the lack of creativity and uh, how good Arsenal were playing as well. And uh, Larson, they're not quite able to have the accuracy to be able to put that one across keeper into the top of the net. And it did stay at 0-0. And then Arshavin breaking down the left-hand side, plays the ball into Nicholas Bentner. And I genuinely, if Nicholas Bentner scores a goal against me, I will retire from FIFA. Um, thankfully he was horrific there put the ball past the post and uh, we were able to come away with a draw against top of the league which ordinarily I would have been a little bit disappointed with but uh, the way we've been playing recently and especially with the way we played it in that particular game uh, delighted to come away from a, from a game against Arsenal with a point and a clean sheet. So uh, Kieran Westwood may be starting again next time out. I'm not entirely too sure whether I'll start him against Liverpool, which is our next game. So uh, be sure to come back in the next episode to see the uh, how we get on in the league. And if we do uh, if we do think about maybe starting Kieran Westwood over Minulay on a more permanent basis. And uh, also do leave me a comment down below with uh, some options for a potential goalkeeping replacement. Obviously, you can see we are on the uh, the 8th of November. It's early in uh, November, so we've got a couple of months to start thinking about things. But So that is going to wrap this one up then, guys. Please do uh, leave the video a like, and uh, that would be fantastic. And do leave me a comment down below as well. You'll see we do have a new end slate here. I am eventually going to have some sort of music to go over the end slate, and I'll shove it at the end rather than talking over it. But uh, there are links on screen to... Uh, the previous episode in this career mode series and also another episode to one of the other videos on my channel so i hope you do like the new graphics uh, my cousin actually made it for me and uh, incidentally he did make the uh, the channel emblem and the uh, the thumbnail for the sunday career mode as well so huge thanks to uh, to him i will leave a link in the description to his channel and to his twitter as well so I'll pop across and uh, just say thank you to him for all the graphic help he has given me that would be fantastic as well so that is going to wrap this one up then guys i'm going to cut it off here because the video is getting a little bit longer and it's going to kill me on rendering times so uh, i'll catch you next time